making cleaner transitions here than those marks that I made earlier. I now need to make some kind of uh, arrangement here of beads or whatever comes to mind as I start to turn it just to give it a separation between the sphere and the first of the skirts. Uh, usually it's just a step or a small bead and then you can flare out to the skirt. So I want to form some kind of bead here. To do that I need to give myself a piece of wood that stands away from the rest. So I'll just cut myself a groove there. And this piece here will become the bead. Just cleaning up this top edge here, being very careful about how I touch the smear. It's not turning completely true now so thin and I don't want to pierce through there and actually cut the sphere off so I've got to be very careful. the outside edge of the first top skirt starting to form. Just to finish off this bead here, I'm going to turn again to this small tool. I've got it's just a scraper really, a very small one. It just lets me finish off. Hopefully you can see I'm starting to form a curve here, there's a bit of a bump. So I'm going to follow that round now. I'm going to turn back to my gouge. Follow that round very gently. Try and keep that curve. All the way out to the point. Again I'm looking at the horizon here to check that this curve is approximately the shape that I want. go in a little bit deeper at the top here. Now we're starting to get to the point where we're coming below where the cracks penetrate the wood. And so this point here is going to be in a skirt and I can arrange the skirt now so that this piece will be cut away leaving points either side and therefore getting rid of that crack. Same thing with the uh, the block below it and you can see though that this crack further down does actually propagate into the center but I will be going deeper here. So now I have to do the same procedure on the second skirt and so I'll get on with that. this skirt to be inside, or the points of this to be inside the points of this, so I'm making it narrower.
need to do is to cut up inside these skirts to separate them from each other so that I can then mark up and cut the curves that will form the actual skirt itself. I'm going to take some more wood from here to give myself some more space underneath this one but the critical one is this gap between these two. In order to do this cut I've made myself this tool, it's just a piece of 10mm bar uh, made of EN24 steel and you can see I've got a, a, a pointed grind on here with this face and this face a sharp and this allows me to take this and cut these skirts. holding this quite tight and bracing it against the tool rest here quite tightly because I want to have pinpoint control at the end of this cutter. We're quite deep in here now, I just want to thin the end of this top skirt down, this is a bit too thick still and so once I've done that I can then move on to this one and I'll get back to you when we've done that. So now you can see I've cut more of the skirts away and uh, it's getting quite thin here, don't think I'll go any thinner than that. So now what I need to do is decide on the shape of this part of the pedestal. Now I'm going to cut some of this away, remembering that I need to uh, take off this last piece of bark and uh, leave the foot here and uh, again um, I want to put a skirt in at this point as well so I need to bring the pillar down and then do some kind of transition and then into another skirt and then flare out to the the base. So in order to get the spacing of that correct let's do the base now and then we can see what space you've got left here to do the transition and the bottom skirt. So here we are a little bit further on now, you can see that I've turned this down to be a little bit narrower at the bottom than it is at the top, again I think that gives the piece a more lighter feel and I've got a step here and this is going to become a bead like we had at the top and what I've tried to do is I've tried to make the undercut here which is going to be part of this skirt turn around and be the same diameter as this step so that it looks like it's a, a through piece to it. Obviously we're running into these splits again at the end here and I'm going to try and use these uh, again within the skirt that I cut so that these things get cut away as much as possible. Obviously not going to be quite possible uh, because they, they're all at random points. Uh, so now you can see that this is going to be the, the bottom skirt here that's flaring out. Uh, I need to undercut this and then finish turning the curve of the base of the pedestal. So I'll get on with that now and you'll see that when I come back to it. I'm just going to use the bottom wing here to undercut the skirt. I'm going to turn to my parting tool and do a cleaner cut 
directly underneath where I want the skirt to finish. The diameter at this point here where I've just undercut, I want to be the same diameter as here. So it looks like a single piece going through with beads and skirts. So here we can see the skirts a little bit further on. Uh, you can see all the splits in this. So these splits are going to dictate where I'm going to do my cuts to try and get rid of most of them. As I said earlier, I'm not going to be able to get rid of all of them, but I will be able to get rid of some. Uh, again, I've been doing a little bit of sanding here, not much, uh, just a 250 grit. And you can see that we're starting to pick up some of the nice grain in the wood. So it should be quite a nice piece when it's finished. Just got to be really careful now about treating these cracks and cutting these skirts, which is what we'll do next. So now I need to mark up for the skirts and get them equally spaced all the way around. To do this, I've uh, made a slight adaption to my lathe. Just got a piece of plywood here and carefully marked it up with divisions all the way around. So these give me equidistant spacing. There's two rings here. There's one based on a pentagon, one based on a hexagon. So the outer ring gives me 24 and that's the one I'll be using. Here you can see I've set up my rest so that it's running along the centre of the piece. Normally your rest sits slightly below because of the width of the tool. But here I've brought it up so that it's running along the centre of this. So I can use it now as a rest for the pencil to make a mark to start laying out for the skirts. And here I've engaged in this, this one here, so I'll just mark it to show me where I've started. And I can use this to mark the skirts and I'll work my way around until I've done a full revolution. You can see that I've started as close to one of these to where a crack is. Now I could take it out of the lathe and rotate it slightly to make it match, but it's close enough here because I'm going to be cutting arcs out here and that'll get rid of most of that. So I'm just going to work my way around now marking this up on this skirt and the top ones and I'll get back to you when I've finished. Here you can see the marking out that I've done. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to spin the lathe slowly and mark out a couple of points on here that I can use as depth gauges. And these outer rings here are just so that I can use them as guide points because I use them to come up to the points and I can see how far apart on each one so I'm trying to get the curves of the skirts as equal as possible. Here you can see that I've now marked out these, trying to do it so that these arcs here are going to be cut away and this will cut away a lot of the cracks. So I've picked the divisions that lines up with a lot of the cracks landing in the middle of the bit that gets cut away. And so most of them should be fairly stable. Got to be very careful when we're doing this because they are quite delicate. See I can move that and uh, they can break off. Okay so now I'm going to cut the skirts and to do that I'm going to use this, this grinding tip here. It's just a, a, a sanding drum really. Uh, and again on the high speed tool I can work my way in here and do this and I'm going to start at the top and work my way down to the bottom. This top one and this bottom one I can use this large drum for but this one here where I've got much smaller uh, frills on the edge of the skirt I'm going to change to a small drum and I'll show you that when I get there. Mm -hmm. 